Welcome to Different Like Me Culture with your host, Elise November, a licensed clinical social worker for more than 21 years who brings a brand new approach to learning by providing hands-on, interactive, web-based lessons that are easy to use and implement and focus on some of the most important topics in today's society. Bullying, dementia, special needs, relationship issues in 55-plus communities. These four topics are the focus of the Different Like Me Culture Program. For more information, call 561-270-2280 and begin your proaction approach towards these major challenges in our community. Call 561-270-2280 today and get started. Now, here's your host, Elise November. Hi, I'm Elise November, and welcome to Different Like Me Culture. Different Like Me Culture is going to bring to you some web-based programming on four diff different topics, special needs. Um, we're also going to bring to you dementia, and we are also going to talk about bullying for seniors as well as bullying for children. So right now we are joined by R Dr. Robin Boniface, a uh, researcher and professor over at Arizona State, I believe, Robin? Yes? That's correct. Welcome. Welcome. Thank so you. So why don't we talk a little bit about you and tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing and um, go ahead. All right. Uh, well, like you said, I am a researcher and professor at Arizona State University, which is in a Phoenix, Arizona. And um, my research area of interest is enhancing psych psychosocial care and quality of life for older adults. Um, and I'm especially interested in um, helping older adults who have chronic illness and disability or who have long-term care needs. And my recent projects look at um, aggression between older adults and then bullying in, in late life. And before I went into academia, I was a nursing home um, social worker for many, many years. And um, before that, I was a nursing assistant in a nursing home. So my research interests um, come directly out of my um, practice experience in social work. Great, great. And that today our topic is on uh, senior bullying. So yes. today we're going to be talking about senior bullying, about the epidemic, I think. I, I think it's really like a, a epidemic that it either is unnoticed or that is, um, I guess, just undisclosed by, by elderly people. So why don't you tell us a little bit how you became interested in the subject of senior bullying? Okay. Um, my interest in senior bullying grew out of my work in resident-to-resident -resident aggression in nursing homes. I was doing a study um, to look at what happens when older adults in a nursing home setting um, get in a verbal fight with each other or a physical fight or there's um, uh, sexual aggression and, and things like that, learning about um, how often does it happen and how do staff intervene and what seems to work the best and specifically looking at the role of social work. And so as I was learning about that in the nursing home setting, it came to my attention that there was this other type of behavior going on. It wasn't exactly aggression. I mean, there wasn't hitting or anything like that, um, but there was still a lot of distress caused by the behavior. And then I found out that that same type of behavior was not only going on in nursing homes, but even more rampant in um, assisted living and in senior centers and retirement housing. And the behavior was just gossiping and spreading rumors and um, excluding people from groups, um, teasing one another, making fun of one another. And it was just exactly the kind of thing you hear about going on in um, junior high. So it just dawned on me that, you know, this is, this is bullying. This is just like bullying that we see in the schools. It's just um, happening with older adults. 
Let me back up a little bit. I have written a bullying prevention program for adults. And mm -hmm. in writing the bullying prevention program, I, of course, needed to pilot it uh, to make sure it kind of worked. And so what I did was uh, wrote the program, went over to a facility locally, and piloted the program. And I found the same thing. And at first, it was funny, because when I started to pilot the program, um, and we did the first couple of sessions, people weren't really speaking up. So I said to myself, okay. you know, is it really a problem here? Is there not? And then as I came back week after week doing the program, all of a sudden began to, people began to speak up and say things like, you know, when I first moved in here, I went into the uh, cafeteria or the, the dining room for breakfast, and I walked over to a table, and there were two empty seats. I walked over with my husband. There were two empty seats, and we said, hi, you know, my name is so-and-so and so-and-so, and, -so -and, -so, and can, can we sit down with you? And they were told, no, sorry, that seat's taken. Can't sit here. So mm -hmm. what did the lady tell me? She said, we, my husband and I looked at each other and we said, we moved into this place expecting to be welcomed and that there would be people around. And now we were just excluded. And they took their trays and they went upstairs, never to return again for mm -hmm. breakfast. And uh, that's just not okay. And it wasn't only them, but it was somebody else who spoke up about the same situation. And then another one spoke up about the same situation. So, you know... I guess we talk about like what does bullying look like in older adults and does it look the same as kids? I mean, it does. Is, is it the outward, you know, hey, you know, I'm going to beat you up, give me your lunch money type of thing? Maybe not. It, it's much more subtle, but it's still there and, and the effect is still the same. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. And the scenarios you just mentioned um, point to one of the difficult times are when the times when bullying is likely to occur or negative behavior, I mean whatever, negative social behavior, whatever we want to call it, um, is um, during that transition where somebody um, is moving in um, to a new um, setting. It seems that that's a time when people can be, be targeted. Sort of like being the new kid in school. Yeah. It's that same phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I get it. So I know you've, you've done a whole bunch of research on the, the topic of senior bullying, because when you Google senior bullying, your name is the first one to pop up. So yeah, like, I know oh, that, that like I, I guess you and I and a couple of other people are pioneers in the field. And I know uh -huh. you've, done a, you've done some research. Is, is that something that you're able to talk about? Yeah, I'm happy that to you've talk done? about my my research and um, I know when you google my name uh, it, it looks like I've done like 500 studies on uh, bullying I've actually done one study <laughs> um, and um, that's got a lot of attention focused on it and um, it was a study in um, assisted living facilities here in um, the Arizona and um, the the project had two phases where we did one-on-one um, -on -one interviews um, with the residents about um, um, b bullying they had experienced or uh, social just um, social interaction patterns with their peers that made them uncomfortable because we were trying to get at um, we didn't want to be labeling behavior for them but we wanted to hear them spontaneously talk about the kinds of things that bother them so we did one-on-one -on -one, um, interviews about um, what bothers you um, what impact does it have on your life um, and and how do you cope with it and then the second phase was um, we did some again it was it, it was meeting with them individually but it was a more structured um, interview where we did some standardized instruments um, where we measured um, their cognitive status um, their mood status um, their self-esteem and their um, experience of trauma and then we were able to divide the sample into people who um, were who had been bullied and people who, who who bullied as well so everyone in the sample had experienced bullying but some also bullied others so some were both um, victims and perpetrators and some were just victims so that um, is the is the study the two different um, 
phases. So I can tell you um, what we, we found, or perhaps you have a question about the study itself. Yeah, I remember when we spoke, um, we mm. spoke a little bit when I had initially contacted you, and you were yes. telling me about some of the findings that you found um, about the people who were bullied and then some of the history that they had in their background as well. Yeah. Yeah, those are some of the, the findings of the second phase of the study. And um, one of the, the differences that we found between people who bully and people who don't is that um, people who bully have fewer episodes, uh, fewer, life, um, tr fewer episodes of lifetime trauma compared to people who don't bully, which was um, a real surprise to me and and let me talk a little bit about what I mean by lifetime trauma we used um, a measure that lists um, 17 different types of trauma somebody might experience in their life and it sort of ranges from smaller traumas to more um, more severe traumas so it might be um, like having a spell of illness um, spending a, a lengthy amount of time um, in the hospital um, being in a motor vehicle accident, um, w watching um, or, you know, having a loved one die, um, to, um, you know, being raped or um, seeing someone killed. Um, and so we didn't ask the respondents to tell us what the experiences were, but just to tell, them, tell us how many they experienced. Did you have two of these happen? Did you have um, five of them happen? Did you have eight of them happen? So they just reported a number. And so people who bully had fewer episodes than people who don't bully. And I thought it would be the opposite. But um, So people who not. bully have fewer episodes <clears throat> of some type of trauma, which kind of yes. makes sense, and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in writing my program, the... I guess the, the underpinning or the, the, the underpinning of my program is the development or fostering empathic responses. And exactly. I think what you're saying is that when somebody has had trauma, maybe they develop more empathy for, mm -hmm. um, for others. Is that, does that sound kind of right? Yes? Yeah. No? Maybe? Yeah. Yeah? Um, that's my... Um, underlying theory to explain the difference that I found that if you've had less um, difficulty in life you have had less opportunity to develop empathy um, towards the experiences of others and the literature among bullying with um, children it, one of the highlights is um, lack of empathy or, or less empathy um, so, so it makes sense to me too I mean at first it didn't but as I thought about it more um, I think that's probably the the connection. Less difficult experience in life, less opportunity to develop empathy towards others. Yeah, I, I get it because you know my motto is if you feel it, you get it. So my mm -hmm. my program tries to put people in the shoes of the person who is the victim because I figure mm -hmm. if I could put the bully in the shoes of the victim, hopefully they're less likely to engage in that type of behavior again. And yeah. so that's, that's kind of been my approach as far as prevention, because I always feel like once the bullying has happened, it, the damage has already been done. If we, if we go back to that example of the two people who go down with their trays and they're told that they're excluded, then I've, and they went upstairs, they've basically told me that they are never going to go down for breakfast again. The, the damage mm -hmm. has already been done. They don't feel comfortable. They don't feel welcomed. So I think that if we could work more on preventative approaches and creating a sense of community and creating a sense of, you know, almost like helping hands or, or work, people working together or coming together, um, almost, you know, just like a reaching your hand out to somebody um, type of effect, I think that, that, that we could help to at least eradicate part of the problem. Yeah, I, I agree. I really see um, intervention for bullying among older adults. It's, it needs to start at the organizational level. 
um, so that there's a, a culture of caring or a culture of community that's established. And um, if you, you you look at how bullying has been handled in the school systems, it, I mean, they're, they're really working to change the culture. That bullying is not um, okay. There's rather regular discussions about it. There's signage all over. I mean, it's really, you know, the persistent message that bullying's not okay. Um, let's be kind to one another. And that's the same th type of thing we need to do in our senior organizations is help to create that culture that, you know, it's, it's not okay when somebody moves in that you don't let, allow them to sit with you and, and, and helping people to have um, the skills to know how to welcome people and how to make people feel comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. I, I too, I, I agree a hundred percent. I think it, it starts at the organizational level because if mm -hmm. we could, if you could create some type of an emotional climate where it's just not tolerated and right. the norm is that we have this wonderful welcoming committee and that, you know, we are going to, um, you know, have, have maybe somebody mentor a new person. And when the new person comes in, that person is going to take them around and introduce them to everybody and kind of show them the ropes. I think mm -hmm. that, that number one, you establish some type of a connection um, with a person or with people. And then also you begin to feel welcome. I mean, for example, which is, is kind of, I guess, a similar situation away. When I moved from New York to Florida, I had a girlfriend here, and she kind of took me under her wings. And I didn't know anything about Florida. Even before I moved down, she said to me, my kids were two and four at the time when we moved down. So she said to me at that time, she says, oh, I have the best preschool for you. And I made the phone call before I even came down and set up a meeting with the director before I even came down. And then when I came down, she took me to every single uh, uh, shopping center, and she took me to every single, um, you know, place that would be helpful to me and show me where to shop and show me where to buy the kids' clothes and showed me where to go for, uh, you know, to buy pharmacy goods and whatever. So, mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, and it was just super helpful for me to be able to um, be able to have somebody show me around and show me what it was like. So, yeah. That type of outreach really makes a difference um, in terms of somebody's level of comfort in settling into a new new place and it affects your feelings about the new place. Yeah, yeah, you feel welcome, you feel like it's, it's home and, and when you're embraced by somebody it really makes a huge difference. So at this point now we're going to take a little break and okay. we'll be right back. Um, you're listening to Different Like Me Culture and uh, we'll, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Elise November, creator of the Bully Free Culture. As both a mother and professional, I have found these statistics to be alarming. Prevention is the only way to remedy this overwhelming problem because once the bullying has occurred, the damage has already been done. It waters the seed of fear, anxiety, and depression in each of its victims that quickly grows into an all-consuming, life-altering problem. You have been listening to Different Like Me Culture with your host, Elise November, who brings you a brand new approach to learning about major issues in our community. Call 561-270-2280 for more information today. Now, back to our show. Welcome back. You've been listening to Different Like Me Culture. I am your host, Elise November, and we have our guest, Robin Bonifaz, Dr. Robin Bonifaz, a researcher and professor out in Arizona State. Uh, today, our topic is on senior bullying, and uh, you are listening to WNNN 1470. If uh, we have a call in number here, yeah, 888. 565? 1470. 1470. Okay. So we're going to pick up where we left off now. And it, Robin, let's talk about one of my big pet peeves. And okay. um, one of my big pet peeves is why do you think that, 
Do you think that um, facilities are welcoming of you and I walking in and saying that there's a problem, that they might have a bullying problem? What, what, are, your, what are your thoughts about that? Um, I would think if I were to walk into one of our one of the facilities in my area and to announce that that um, there would be for, for some there would be resistance um, to that um, and to others they would be you know they'd be more open to that idea they may not call it bullying but they would they would recognize that you know, there's there's social interaction problems in our residents, and um, they would really welcome the um, intervention because what I've found is that um, providers are really struggling with these um, issues, these problematic relationships between their residents or between their tenants, um, and really. Um, stymied about you know how do we handle this um, how do we respect tenants rights and re and resident rights while at the same time um, promoting more positive interaction so some would really welcome it others would be more you know no our place is wonderful we you know we don't have any problems here um, even though they do, and um, the reason for that, I don't, I, I don't mean to be, I'm painting a negative light on providers, but um, providers may not be um, aware of the problem, um, or sometimes I've seen where where pro providers just feel like it's it's not really their place to intervene, and that's something that residents, um, tenants, just need to figure out for themselves. Do you think it's about more about their bottom line? I mean, you know, I, I guess it's, it's, it's difficult to say really what it is, but why wouldn't, if, if I, okay, if we think about it, if I had a, an assisted living or an independent living facility, why wouldn't I want my residents to get along? So I'm going to create this wonderful place that looks great, it smells great, we have great cooks, we have great chefs, we have great activities, we're going to tell everybody there's bingo and there's movies and there's this group and that group and Maj group and whatever group, and, and it's all great, and it all looks great from the outside, almost like a little bit of a white picket fence syndrome, and then they move in, and then these types of things happen, like you and I are describing, where people are excluded and leaving people out and they're forming cliques and and they're just not they're not connecting with others so maybe you know I guess I guess what I'm looking for and I don't know that there's an easy answer to this is is we have to start to create awareness and I think through your research and I know we'll talk mm -hmm. a little bit later on about the projects that you're working on and and what I'm working on is to try to create some awareness so that we can help people and and not only are we helping the residents but we're also helping the facility because once somebody moves in guess what they could also move out so exactly. how are you gonna how are you gonna um you know keep your numbers up as far as retention or what about word of mouth referrals i mean if if i if i was a resident and i was really really happy with where i was living i would call all my friends and say this is a great place you know what this is a really wonderful community we all get along we all everybody's so nice here and welcoming that's the place i would want to go forget the food forget what the place looks like Definitely. and forget all the activities i just want to know that i'm going to have lots of friends that i'm going to be happy that i'm going to fit in that i'm going to be welcomed mm -hmm. yeah and i think the, the idea of promoting um, awareness is is really key because there's two types of awareness one is um, the awareness that um, bullying among older adults is a problem but then also that how the experience of bullying, you know, people in your facility experiencing bullying, how does that affect um, your bottom line? And the way it affects is that people are unhappy um, in your building and they either um, move out and so you lose that person or that they talk to other people about their experience and then those other people don't um, want to to move in. So I think for um, for pr pr providers, helping them know that um, you know when you create a caring community and a supportive community, um, that's something that you can sell. 
um, just like you sell um, you know the beautiful decor and the wonderful meals and um, the wonderful services mm hmm absolutely and my other I guess the other issue is is why don't seniors complain and speak up about the problem um, mm -hmm. you know I'll tell you my my findings and 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 the answers that I got but but what are your thoughts about that? Well, in, in my research, um, if you'll remember, part of what we um, measured was um, self-esteem um, and mood. And the results that came out um, is that people who are bullied have higher rates of depression and lower self-esteem. So if you think about um, being a self-advocate, and, and going to management, going to administration, um, going to the person who's bullying you and sticking up for yourself and, and trying to change the problem. It's, it's very, very difficult to do that when you're depressed um, and when you have low self-esteem. You just can't, um, you know, you can't be your own best um, advocate. So that's um, part of, of the, the challenge. Um, I think the other part of the challenge is, you know, whether you're depressed or have low self-esteem or not, I mean, people generally don't like to make um, waves. They don't like to um, tattle on other people, for lack of a better, uh, better word. Um, so those are the things that have come up um, in, in my work. Mm -hmm. and, and I kind of feel the same way. The, the biggest response that I got from people was that, um, they said, I'm old, mm -hmm. and I really don't want to be bothered. I'm old. I'm tired. Do I want to fight this battle? Do I have enough yeah, fight, hard, fight in me to battle this? And, and if, even if I had enough fight, who would I go to? And who's mm -hmm. going to listen to me? And so I go to administration, and I tell administration, and they say, okay. You know, someone has just moved to do so. Um, because they feel it's important. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And that's why I guess being pioneers in the field, we really need to help to create this awareness. Um, mm -hmm. I was asking about the regulatory boards, and I, I guess they're different in, in, from state to state, but here in yes. Florida, I mean, independent living facilities, which is where most of this is going on, they're regulated by the hotel commission, I believe, they have something, mm -hmm. something to deal with the hotel and restaurant management. And there are no regulations for them. So right. it's basically just a residence, kind of like a hotel. You move in and you live there. And there, yeah, there really are no to... regulations. Um, so maybe, maybe some, you know, some more laws and some lobbying and contacting, I guess, the um, government officials who maybe could start to, we could start to talk to so that we could start to really make some good, effective change. Yeah, that's one of the um, key steps that um, need to, to help to reduce this problem. And you mentioned um, um, independent housing, that that's one of the prime locations for um, bullying. And I just wanted to comment that's so true. And part of what um, we've found is that um, the, the higher functioning the people are who live in the environment, the more likely um, bullying it is to occur. So you see it more often in independent living situations than you do in assisted living than you do um, in, in right. nursing homes. I agree. I agree. We have about two minutes left and I know that you are working on a project. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to talk about the new project that you're working on and we'll, and we'll wrap up. Okay. Well, we've been talking about um, providers. So my next um, research study um, is a national um, questionnaire, a survey study, to learn more about what um, providers are experiencing regarding bullying, what, um, what tends to happen in their facilities, um, how often does it happen, um, how, do, how do they respond. So I've gotten input from residents um, and now wanting to hear more from management to see their side of the story and, and what they need. Um, to better get a handle on bullying among older adults. Look, I really look forward to hearing more about that research, and I, I, I can't wait to see what you what you found. So, 
Um, I'd like to thank my guest, Robin, Dr. Boniface, for joining us today and speaking on the top topic of uh, senior bullying. And uh, we are here every Monday night from 6 to 6.30, Different Like Me Culture. Join us on WNNN 1470. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you for tuning in to Different Like Me Culture with Elise November. Join us every Monday at 6 p.m. Call 561 270